Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I'm telling you, fintech is blowing up. And this video is about the future of banking. I'll also share with you some SBI VC trade updates. And there is a lot happening in the XRP community here in Japan. First, I wanna show you something that you might find interesting. I think you can only see it if you have an IP address from Japan. And this is an SBI online ad for the FX trading site. Because most of the people are doing their trading on a mobile app, it makes sense to have their advertisement running online. I'm, I'm sure that when SBI VC trade goes into full mode for its campaign, we're going to see a lot of this type of ad. Okay, so what I wanna talk about is the future of banking. Um, this is an article that came out on the 7th and the collaboration is key for banks and fintech firms the narrative is really changing in the banking industry it is really everybody has noticed that should they be asleep at the wheel when it comes to fintech they're going to be in the same position as deutsche bank deutsche bank took its first move into fintech not until october october 2017. I just can't believe that. In that last article, it actually is featuring the relationship between Standard Chartered, which took a stake in Ripple through its subsidiary SC Ventures. And Standard Chartered did it very early to back the payments company. They did it for an undisclosed amount. I have not been able to find that amount. If you ever come across it, I'm very curious. Send it to me. But you can see that Deutsche Bank is in big trouble and it's just not, it's restructuring attempt again but the broader challenge for Deutsche is technology. They've been trying to update their legacy IT systems now for the recent year and a half, but uh, now it's being blamed in part for the bank's failure. And it, that failure comes in it, the inability for it to keep up with the wave of innovation that is happening in the fintech industry. So we have learned they are going to lay off, what, one in every five employees. It comes to 18,000 employees. This is actually really scary because 50% of Deutsche Bank's investment bank employees uh, could be let go. Deutsche Bank has at least 49 trillion derivatives on the book. That is 10 times the size of the German GDP. These changes could spark an implosion that spreads throughout the entire financial system. This is why everybody's really paying attention to it. We knew Deutsche Bank had a problem, but now when we really see that it is rolling into this new mode, all that bad debt needs to be unloaded into the system somewhere. And this really could be a big risk. It's going to dissolve its equities sales and trading business i'm so surprised because this is going to be up for grabs for companies like goldman and morgan stanley in shrinking its investment bank with these layoffs uh this is just the start i think you're going to see another wave come through the ceo christian sewing he said they will compete with what they are competitive in and that they uh, spread themselves too thin focus is going to be on the German corporations. So it sounds like to me that they are going to attempt to be a resource for the SMEs. This reorganization, it's going to cost them $8.3 billion over the next three years. Just in Q2 2019 alone, they're going to lose three billion. You know, the bank has tried to restructure itself many times. And in the most recent, they were attempting to merge with the Commerce Bank, but the cost actually wound up to be uh, more than the uh, benefits. So they actually came to a mutual agreement to stop that merger. The stock is down 93% from its peak in 2007. Hmm. Opportunity? I don't know. Can FinTech save it? Possibly, but you know, it is going to be very painful, and I think that it is at great risk for the whole financial system. So, I want to show you that there was a lot of wasted money on banks that tried to reinvent themselves by changing their interiors. I mean, it looks cool and everything, but 
Um, this is an example of what they tried to do in China. This is actually in San Francisco. This is Bradesco uh, in Brazil. This is the UAE. It looks cool, but you know, are, are, is this really the future? And this is in Spain. I just don't think so. And I want to show you why. When we come to look at where people are moving in terms of banking, the consumers now who say they have a bank's mobile app installed on their phone, you can see the baby boomers, 24%. Gen X, Gen Xers, 49%. Millennials, 61%. You can see how that is increasing, but we can't forget the Gen Z. The Gen Z generation, they are the 18, 19, 20 year olds. They are the largest population by segment in the United States. They make up 25.9%. And look at this number. 73% of Gen Z use a digital payment app. So spending money on fancy interiors was just another poor decision. All right, I am going to show you what I think is the future of banking. This is Wheatsy Wind and it's Zoom. This is taking XRP and the ledger beyond speculation. This is a platform. This is not just an app. It's not just a crypto app or a banking app. This is a bank. This is a platform that's going to deliver services for any currency and any crypto. The banking application on the XRP ledger is something that Witsi says his mother could use. He is very aware that it needs to have an easy setup to be uh, easily adopted by the masses. So those long addresses with 26 characters that start with an R, he's going to move something that is more in the likes of social features and a directory. You can see that uh, he spoke here uh, at the innovation portion of BitTrue's uh, get together in Amsterdam about two weeks ago. I'm really surprised. Only 1,272 views on this video. It's very surprising that it doesn't have more views. And I think we also have to remember that, yeah, We See Win is just amazing. He's front and center. He's the voice. He's the face uh, of the XRPL labs. But let's not forget Ali and Tristan, also his workmates. I think they deserve a big attaboy on, on the shoulder. So the real use case is with his banking license that has been uh, put forth out there to, obtain, to be obtained is the future of banking. And I think on the 5th, he gave us a sneak preview of what it looks like. And you can see that it has a very clean user interface. So do keep your eye on this project. Okay, I'm going to just tell you that there's still a lot of um, indication that everything's on track for SBI VC trade site. Now, did I think it was going to go live on the 7th or the 8th as that rumor had said? No, I didn't think so. But do I think it's going to still implement that live trading board this month? Yeah, I actually do. So please don't uh, think that I am um, have changed my mind because everything that I see is leading up to that launch still. So July 1st, we saw the name change. That was an important step. That was when I said to myself, when I saw that name change go through on the 1st, I said, aha, okay, they're on track. And then on July 5th, we saw the breakdown of the business unit and operations. And I said, uh, Okay, now we're really on track. It was also revealed that the 18 million would be uh, put in the capital reserves. So the, as a business unit that's going to track separately uh, with its own profit and loss, you can see that um, all the stage is getting set. And then on the 8th, Japan Association, the Cryptocurrency Business Association website was updated. And you can see that they have their new name here, SBIBC Trade Corporation. And also they added the working capital. So again, I, I keep checking. 
of course, uh, more than you would think on if we actually have the word. But I just think everything is going to launch in full mode this month. Okay. Um, I think, I think you're going to be interested in this. This is actually very current. This is actually like a, like two days old. This is the current featured ranking for the exchanges in Japan. There are 18 exchanges and you can see here that Bitpoint is ranked number one, Bitgate number two, Bitflyer number three, and here is SBI VC Trade. Um, right nipping at their heels is the brand new Rock 10 wallet. This is a brand new site. As you know, this is the Amazon of Japan. They are, uh, I think, wow, they got, they got a really quick ranking at number five. DMM, has a tremendous amount of uh, money that they do in terms of advertising. Same with GMO. They're very much uh, big advertisers. And then everyone else kind of comes down. There's Money Partners and Tao Tao is brand new. Uh, BitBank, which I'm really surprised that they have fallen back down into that position. And this one actually I think is very interesting because it's being backed by some huge players in Japan, including the JR East Railway, which is part of that Sika card, which we well, could see that that prepaid card uh, work interoperability. It's interoperable, uh, interoperable, interoperable. That's a really, that's a, that's a mouthful uh, with the cryptocurrency exchanges. Anyway, I um, think that I will keep on track of this for you to show you because I know that uh, it was made very clear from Mr. Kitao that he is going to be number one in the blink of an eye. So we need to see his uh, fourth position shoot up to number one rank. And believe me, I'll keep track of it for you. All right, everybody, what's going on in Japan? Well, there's a meetup here. So why don't you all come? I <laughs> wouldn't that be just so fun. Uh, it will happen on November 10th, 2019. And they have uh, been putting out this uh, inquiry, how many people plan on coming. There's been 1,143 votes so far. There's three days left. 60% from Japan say they are going to attend and 5% from abroad. Well, if you're coming, do let me know. And then just 35% say, no, they can't come. Well, I think this is going to be a huge amount of people. I mean, so far you've got over 600 people, right? So <laughs> I don't know what kind of venue they're going to use for this. This, this is going to be, this is going to be fun. And then in regards to somebody who's doing some fun 3D, I put this out on Twitter yesterday, but I wanted to share with you also on the video. This is an XRP character. Uh, you can see the hodl and this is the, I need liquidity more and more through here. And it's a uh, Kikubo who is part of the XRP community. He's making this, he just started learning how to use this technique, but I think it's very cool. It's like a 3D in the round. Uh, this is just getting really fun to be able to create graphics that have this amazing. Can you, can you imagine, I think um, our icons will soon be 3D graphics like this. Yeah, very fun. Very, very, very fun. And if you didn't know, he also does a English speaking comic. And I'll put a link in the description below, but I, there's many you can read, but this is one I thought would be appropriate for today. Uh, this is called Hanabi. Hanabi means fireworks in Japanese. And um, here he has Appy, and Appy's holding these XRP fireworks. And he says, let's do fireworks. And wow, I love it. And then prepare for shock. Okay. Nothing happens. Failed? Defective item? Boom! 
Hi, XRP holders. Make haste slowly. <laughs> His English is a little, you know, it's cute. But what it means is XRP is always late in terms of its price, price movement, price activity. It's, it's, it's always a little slow. <laughs> so just hang in there, everybody. Uh, it's not a defective product. It just moves a little bit slower than some of the other alts. And this is on the unicorn watch. Look at this. This is the, this is updated on the 7th of July. You can see the current prices and the return on investment all time highs. You can see that XRP is a 10 times return. Zcash, wow, did some really amazing 58 time turn. Nano, ADA, and we come all the way down here to Bitcoin, which only two times from its current price. So anyway, that gives you a perspective of what's possible. And I think that we never should forget of the potential that a lot of these alts have. Okay, everybody, I'm jumping to the fluff. And uh, if you are new to this channel, I do something, even though that felt like a little bit of culture at the end, but I do something that is about Japan at the end of the videos. And one of my videos on the second, uh, I don't know why, sometimes I just can't figure out why. It was turned out to be a very um, highly viewed video. There was, uh, there has been almost 20,000 uh, people who have viewed it in just six days. And I think in that case, there's a lot of people who saw the video that don't watch me all the time. And when I got to the fluff story at the end, somebody who uh, probably just doesn't know that I have that segment at the end of the videos said that this is an example of why women can't be taken seriously in crypto. And I thought, oh man, it takes a lot to get under my skin. But that comment came very, very close. And I had to remind him that in Japan, all the women take over the management of money in the households. And uh, to say that just because I have a fluff story at the end is just, wow, unbelievable. So if you're new to the channel or you have not stayed this long, and if you're interested in some cultural part of Japan, great. If you're not, I'll see you next time and you don't have to watch this part. But today's cultural is that, again, talking about manners, Japan is very, very strict when it comes to protocol. And there is uh, a seating order for restaurants, for inns, for hotels, for uh, anything that is done where food is served at a table. So what I want to show you is where the best seat is for the most important person who's in that group. And usually everybody knows who is the most important person and they get what's called the kamiza. That's the God seat. And the kamiza is uh, always against the wall, okay? And always furthest from the door. So you can tell here in these four chairs, this is the kamiza. So the person who, whether it's the guest of honor, the oldest person, the person who's being celebrated, uh, the person who ha is ranked highest in terms of seniority, whatever the reason is, um, that person would get this seat here and the person who gets the seat closest to the door is called a shimoza shimo means lower and that person is usually a junior person or the person who is uh, tasked with doing lots of things at the table like like making sure everybody's wine sake or or beer glass is full because you don't pour your own remember from a previous video and here we've got maybe one that might be a little confusing to you. So here you've got an open room and there's no real wall. I mean, so what do you do in this situation? Well, this is the key right here. And let me show you what that is. That's called a tokonoma. And the 
Tokonoma is where you have an alcove, sometimes with a scroll, sometimes with an ikebana, uh, ikebane uh, flower arrangement. Um, in this particular picture, we have a piece of, looks like uh, ceramic ware and uh, a picture hanging on the top. So the kamiza in this case would be this seat here. And then one more is for business. And this is the meeting room. So it's very, very clear that the fourth seat is closest to the entrance and the most uh, uh, highest ranked seat would be furthest from the wall because you've got two walls here. So it's like, well, which wall do I do furthest from the entrance? And also too, you know, I think I lost it. If the meeting room is round, that's also something, okay, so here's a round meeting room. So you can, see that the first position is back here. All right, everybody, I am going to put the reason why this is the case, because it does happen to be connected to history, but I'm going to upload a more uh, longer version on the COIL website. So I'll be sure to give you a link to that. It'll be a, an extended version of this topic that will be seen only on the COIL website. Okay, everybody do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.